International Skating Derby presents Roller Superstars, featuring the world famous, world champion Los Angeles Thunderbirds. In today's game, from Tokyo, Japan, the Thunderbirds take on the powerful Tokyo Bomber team. Hi, I'm Elmer Anderson against, well, with Ralphie Valadares here. We're going to talk about a team that has surprised everybody in the world of bank track skating, the Tokyo Bombers. They are small, they're fast, they're aggressive, and they possess an ingredient called pride. And Ralph, that's a great big part of winning. That's right, Elmer. And I tell you, uh, the Japanese are noted for having pride, and certainly the Tokyo Bombers do have plenty of it. And I'm not saying that the Th Thunderbirds don't have pride, because we certainly do have pride. We have pride because we have been world champions for many, many years, and I tell you how much pride we have. When a Thunderbird skater, or say a, a rookie from the training school, puts on a T-Bird jersey, that person has much pride. And just the mere fact that he's skating with a T-Bird. Well, the fact that the uh, Tokyo Bomber team does not have a huge, big John Johnson on the team, they have all concentrated on skaters that look like they all came from the same mold. Well, that's right. Say, is that good for a team? Well, I tell you, we don't have the small skaters the Tokyo team has, but that's, uh, we're pretty tricky. I've seen a lot of trick skaters come out, and a lot of tricks come out of the Thunderbird skaters, and I tell you, they're very tricky, and the Tokyo team, I've learned much, much from the T-Birds. Well, watching them from our announcing booth, why, we have found that they are very agile. They tumble, they roll, they do a good job, but they come right back. Well, I tell you what, they, they work Work hard at what they're doing, and they're going to be a great team in the future. I think they're good now. Okay, Ralph, well, we're going to see how good they really are, because in just one minute, we'll be back with action with the Tokyo Bombers and the T-Birds. Hey, like we said, here we are at the Tokyo Sports Arena. Tokyo, Japan, and we're going to see today, and you can bet on that statement, that we're going to be watching a very, very exciting roller game between the Tokyo Bombers, this is their home base, they're in the white jerseys, the blue shorts and tights, against the world champion, world famous Los Angeles Thunderbirds. Way across the sea, we're bringing you the D-Birds and the Tokyo Bombers and a colorful game we're bound to have whenever these two teams meet in competition. Now let's watch it here as at the rear of the pack, number 60, captain of the girls' field. He is a great one, Kiko Ayabi. And now knocked out of the way, here comes Donna Fox moving in for the T-Bird team. For the first skating period of this exciting four-period game, down goes number two, one of the Tokyo Bomber gals, Skinny Minnie Miller, trying to get her teammate in, and they did. So the T-Birds picked up a couple of points in that play, and there's Keiko Ayabi. And number two that we're watching here, Sai Nayata from Chiba, which is a suburb of Tokyo itself, the southern part. And we'll have to say this, we've said it before, whenever we comment, do the commentating for the Tokyo Bomber team, they're such an attractive bunch of young ladies. They're all the same size, even the men, except one big fellow on the Tokyo Bomber men's field, Kaz Kawano. He's a big one. But everybody else looks like they came from the same mold. Usually they're very cool, calm, and collected as they skate. They have great, great oriental patience. And they display it quite well. They wait for the right opportunities. They don't get upset as easily as the American skater, but they flop just as hard, they're just as fast, and just as good. They've been in competition now 10 years with the first training program in Tokyo. So we're watching Skinny Minnie Miller as she's trying to defend against her. Jammer, the opponent, number three, Keiko Mori from Tokyo. And Mori got in, picked up one great big Tokyo bomber point. And a very happy crowd here as a jam pack capacity crowd here at the Tokyo Sports Arena. They're attractive young ladies. There's Skinny Mitty Miller. And there she is. Doll-like porcelain complexion. As we said before, they're such a delightful bunch of people. They extend the great courtesies from the, in the Orient against the for the American skaters. There it is, one to two in favor of the Tokyo, correction, the Los Angeles Thunderbirds. Jam coming up now, watch it. If you just joined us along the 
Thunderbird Network. We're watching two of the Tokyo Bomber girls move out out of play. Number two, Masai Nayata. Number four, Yumiki Hori. And coming on out now, Alice Mason. And down she goes. So now the only jammers here are Tokyo Bombers, and they're moving in very quickly, very quickly. They got speed here. They'll match any American team with speed. Their defense, of course, they have to rely generally on Keiko Ayabi. But let's watch this here as Skinny Minnie Miller defends for the T-Bird team. And old Skinny's got her work cut out. She's working to the right, works to the left, gets one opponent in the rail, another one recovers, comes right back. And let's watch it here as Skinny Minnie dropped. The leading jammer, oh no, they keep right on coming and ricocheting off. The lead jammer, down they go. There was no score in that play. Hey, somebody's called a timeout. We'll be right back with more action after these words. Hey, there's a good shot here of Skinny Minnie Millers. Dad, she's shaking her head. A little concerned here. I don't know why, because she did a remarkable job of stopping any scoring potential by two Tokyo Bomber Jammers. Something's bothering Skinny Minnie, and I guess the teamers realize that being in somebody else's backyard, plus this is a brand spanking new track. It's the fastest skating surface in the world today. It's 110 feet long, 75 feet wide. Racing out number three, Keiko Mori from Tokyo. She's getting here in front of mom and pop and all her friends and fans. She's trained a long time, as so has the entire Tokyo Bomber team, and they've learned their trade well. They do remarkably well. And they have great, great, as you know, the Oriental pride. They want to do a superb job, and they do. They really knocked off the American teams when they toured the United States. Boy, they did a good credit to their particular game. And now, at the rear of the pack, a double block by the Tokyo Bombers. And it looks like Donna Fox is having troubles. And on the inside, she did it. So Donna Fox racked up two big T-Bird points. And it seems like Donna did it on her own at that time. So we're seeing a very, very good game here at the Tokyo Sports Arena. And it's my privilege, my pleasure as Elmer Anderson to bring you all this excitement that the bank track sport can generate. And it does, from the opening gun to the closing gun. I thrill a second here, the only sport. We said it before, if you like your sporting action wild and rough, you like to see guys and gals banging away at body contact action, this should be your bag then. Here we go, all four qualified jammers are moving out to Tokyo Jammers. Number three and number four, Keiko Mori three, Yumiki Hori four. Down goes a T-Bird, down goes another T-Bird, and again, bad news this time for the T-Birds. Let's watch the defense as it starts to get in formation. And this time again, Skinny Mini feels that. She did it before, she can do it again. And now look at the intent look here of our fine Japanese fans. Skinny Mini has enough working room now. And of course, dropping back, as we said before, the Japanese team, the Tokyo Bombers, looked like they came from the same mold. They went on the inside, the outside of Skinny Mini, and a roar from the jam-packed Tokyo Sports Arena makes it that shows, of course. They love their Tokyo Bombers, so they picked up two points there we go three for Tokyo and four only one point separating the two teams right after this particular skating period for you fans that are just tuning the dial this way and say hey what's it all about well from the Tokyo Sports Arena in Japan is the roller games the superstars are going at it racing on out here there's a T-Bird followed by the Tokyo Bomber and number four is a Japanese skater skating on the Thunderbirds. And her name is Moto Unuki. The international skating rules are such that there must be one of the foreign skaters on the home team. So Unuki moves up to 
Eko Ayabi who salted her down very good. And on a late chase again. Never give up seems to be the cry of the Tokyo Bomber girls. They keep right on going. Number two, Masai Nayato went down. She gets up again. And the energy that is expelled here must be unbelievable. They never stop trying. And Skinny Mini is determined to show that she's quite capable of being a defense girl all by herself. That was a good sock and block. And what a good play. The Japanese fans here, they applauded Skinny Mini Gwen Miller. That's right. So our referee here, Kiono. His other official is Mickey Tosa. Oh, the whistle sounds, and you'll notice here for you old-time roller game fans that the pack, this particular series, seems to get right intact immediately. No stalling, no wasted time. And uh, Kimi Ayabi, her sister, is the captain of the girls' field. Kimi and Keiko. Number two, Donna Fox, a very attractive blonde gal. Does a remarkable job, the old workhorse of the T-Bird team. But Donna banging away at Kimmy, and these two fine, well-trained, well-conditioned athletes move in. Kimmy goes past her, past sister Keiko. So Keiko defends for the Tokyo Bombers against Donna Fox of the T-Birds, and Skinny Minnie Miller again defending for the T-Birds on Kimmy Ayabi. That's the Ayabi sisters right there. One's a offensive skater, she's knocked down. The defensive skater went down and with fine teamwork, T-Birds roar right in there, picking up four big points for Donna Fox. There's uh, Keiko Ayabi. As you can see, every one of these little Japanese skaters are so, so attractive. And you'll notice the finesse, the talent on that particular Tokyo Bomber team, they're great. And they put their best out. Well, there's a timeout call. While there's a timeout, we're going back to our studio for these words. Hey, take a look at that fine, big crowd here. The Japanese fans turning out in big numbers to watch this game. Their Tokyo Bomber team is competing against the world champion, world famous Los Angeles Thunderbirds. And I'm Elmer Anderson here, bringing you from the Tokyo Sports Arena. A great, great game. Let's watch the finesse of the skating stars of the Tokyo Bombers men's field. They are good. They are an excellent, well-coordinated team. You watch some fine teamwork here. Number two. Sugio Kawashima, he's from Yokohama, which of course isn't too far from uh, our home base here in Tokyo. And number eight, his teammate, it's a hero, Sawano from Yokohama. And they joined the training program at the same time, but let's watch big Danny Riley and that famous windmill power block to the right, to the left. They stagger on a late chase. Comes Greg Quinn, number one for the T-Bird team. A Tokyo Bomber over the rail, another one in the rail, and Greg Quinn moved in and he picked up three T-Bird points on that play. You know, the Thunderbird team, I'll have to say it in their behalf, are so excited for a great number of them. It's their first trip to the Orient, and the hospitality that has been shown and demonstrated to them by the Japanese citizens here is just unbelievable. There he is, that's Mickey Sonoto. He's the coach of the Tokyo Bomber team, and he's also the head trainer. He's been responsible almost by himself to cultivating the Tokyo Bomber team. There's Big John Hall. Did we say more about Big John? He's here to oversee the T-Bird operation. Three for Tokyo, 11 for the Los Angeles Thunderbird team. So. You can imagine now, in their own hometown, in their own home track, the Tokyo Bomber team will try to move that deficit up a little bit. Two against one here, two T-Birds. The fast skating number eight, it's a hero, Sawano. He can move this guy, who, who can he ever? But he's trying to call a playoff. He's outnumbered. He wants to get the lead. 
And this is a good way to demonstrate how the play can be called up. And oh, oh, no soap on that one. He was knocked down. However, he gets up and has watched the great agility, the ability, and defensive qualifications of Mickey Sonoto at the rear of the pack number six. He's handling the situation and doing a good job. Down goes Sam the Man Washington. Down goes the T-Bird Jammer. Here comes Tokyo. Up goes Riley. Up goes another Japanese skater on the T-Bird team. His name is Kenji Shima. And here comes number eight rolling on in. He called that playoff, so it's a hero. Sawano picked up four Tokyo Bomber points. And he's a happy little fellow there. Uh -huh. Riley says, hey, Sonoto. Somebody grabbed here, and there's our fine official, Kiono, and he points to Riley, unnecessary roughness, a $10 fine. Ooh, that's a good referee. Now, Kiono, a little background on him. He's a black belt karate holder. He's third, I believe, third or fourth, is ranking tennis player, table tennis player, that is. There you have it, five for Tokyo, and still 11 for the T-Bird team. And also, Kiono, the official, he has skated as a professional skater in a few competitive games with the Tokyo Bombers. Rear of the pack now, they're whipping out number seven. Now, here's a real speedster, Kuzumi, Hiroshi Kuzumi. He intends to become a marine biologist for his graduate work. He goes to the University of Tokyo, skates in his off-season time, and here comes the T-Bird up to Mickey Sonoto. Our perch way up here is a beautiful sight. We can look right down at these fine skaters. John Hall right there screaming at the T-Bird to get in there. Don't fool around. That's Greg Quinn, and he's having a tough time over the rail, out and down. Damn, down goes Riley. And it looks like Riley and Mickey Sonoto, the coach, for Tokyo having a little something going here. Hey, look at that fine, fine crowd. They enjoy the roller games over here. And uh, John Hall has a few choice words to say to the big redhead. And obviously, the Tokyo Bomber team is a more formidable opponent than the T-Birds are giving them credit for. Still 11-5 favor the Thunderbird team. T-Birds have enjoyed the Fine train ride over here. Boy, that express, that Tokyo Express is something you want to ride on, the bullet. Ooh, does that thing move? There he is, Big Kaz Kawano, number five. He was eventually hoping to be a sumo wrestler, but he got up to about 180 pounds, and that was it. He couldn't get up to 300 like he has to be. He used to be one of that type of wrestlers. But he's content to skate. He said he likes this. Now, one and one here. Let's watch the, the fine agility here. Good blocking on the play. Both wearing number two, Sam Washington, Mr. Excitement. And number two, Sugio Kawashima. A T-Bird went down, but he got up just in time. A T-Bird goes over the rail. And now, number two moves up to, <laughs> as he got his problems now, big Danny Riley. Riley gets all set. There's that hard, tough shoulder block to the jammer. And one to Mickey Sonoto, trying to get back to get Riley out of there. Riley gives him a clobber, knocks him down. Riley, just for good measure, knocks another one down. Riley tearing up the Tokyo Bomber team. He's upset. Woo-hoo! The big Irish redhead is starting to have a few heads roll here. We got Tokyo Bombers all over the track. Here comes Big Cass. Now, if anybody can handle Riley, it's this big guy. He's the largest of all the Tokyo Bomber skaters and trainees. But Kaz, he's a grade school teacher during the season. There's six for Tokyo and still 11 for the T-Birds. And Kaz tells Kiono, hey, get over there and see what's going on. So Kiono runs right over there and he's looking around. He's got to keep his head very alert. Now, as far as the Tokyo Bomber team coming to the United States and competing, which they have done, and a sight to behold. There's John Hall now. Uh, the only problem, the only one that can speak fairly good English and a good amount of it is Mickey Sonoto, along with his girl captain, 
Keiko. They get by pretty good. Boy, how they love to go shopping over here. There goes Mickey. Now watch this uh, youngster. Boy, you talk about a fine trained athlete. He went down, but here comes the big redhead. Like a big rolling juggernaut. And with a leg whip. Here comes Sonoto. He's on a late chase, and this track here is a beauty to behold. Brand spanking new. Fast. T Bird's having a little trouble with it. It's banked two degrees uh, more on the turn, 47 degrees. And it has given the skaters a little bit of trouble. Look at the excitement here. And it's the breaks the fallacy about the Oriental stoic expressions. Well, they have it here. They break loose and they cheer and holler like anybody else. This is the one sport that'll bring it out of you. And there's Riley going at it with Sonoda. Sonoda's having trouble. Sonoda, of course, doesn't have a chance against Riley. Riley, the big, strong, strong skater. And Sonoda's starting to pound on Riley. Riley's, <laughs> those blows are bouncing right off him. Here comes John Hall out. Hall now is in there to try and defend his team. John Hall now, they've kept him out of that infield because he was, uh, prior to the game, had some problems here with the officials. And the official says, Paul, let's get it out of here. Trainer now checking on Mickey Sonoda. Boy, they hit that uh, floor and they hit it hard. And so, oh, looks like old John Hall caught one. Big John. Yes, sir, he'll keep an eye on his uh, little charges, the T-Birds. Well, they're having a good time coming over here. There's six for the Tokyo Bombers and still 11 for the T-Bird team. Moving on out now, looks like the T-Bird's got a chance here and here he comes, that unmistakable skating style of Sam Washington. Sam, he loves it over here. Boy, he's a student of uh, a lot of philosophy of the Orient. Bam, down goes Sam. Sam is one of those readers, you know. And now at the rear of the pack, Hiroshi Kazumi, he's belted down. He gets right back up, lost a lot of ground. That Riley really salted him down. Look at those fans, aren't they pretty? And here he comes now, Kazumi. He's watching, he's waiting. And right behind him now, Mickey Sonoto threw a, oh, that was a flying block. Down went Riley, and boy, did he get out of there. Right past another T-Bird on the inside. Boy, Riley looks like he's shaken up, and Kazumi calls that playoff. I believe he picked up three or four. Uh, well, two, only two points. I guess he flew off the track there, but two points for Tokyo. That helps a little bit. One thing we have to say for the Tokyo Bomber team. During the day, after the game is over, they're out there training. They love it. And we got a timeout call here. So while there's a timeout, we're coming right back with more action after these words. And there's our floor camera getting another look at that fine crowd in one of the most beautiful sports arenas that the Thunderbirds and yours truly have seen in all these years of traveling. Well, beautiful, well constructed and beautiful, spacious. Holds about 18,000 people. It's likened to the spectrum of Philadelphia or the forum of Los Angeles. Atlantic City, many of the big buildings that the roller games participate in. Rolling on out now, the very attractive little gal. Number three, Keiko Mori from Tokyo. Moving in, and up to, again, Skinny Minnie Miller, defending for the T-Birds while Keiko Ayabi got rid of a jamming T-Bird. So now let's watch number three, Mori, move in. Skinny Minnie Gwen Miller has certainly done a remarkable job so far during the game until with teamwork, Tokyo picked up one more big valuable point. Now even though Keiko Ayabi had knocked Gwen Miller out of there, this little gal right here, she called that playoff and picked up one point. Obviously she could have continued on, but her coach had signaled her to call off the play. 
They have their own methods, their own strategy, and it works quite well. Getting that pack intact, and it's remarkable how quickly that pack gets back intact. No rail sitting, no extra time lost, which means there's more action here than ordinary, more jams available. Here's number four, Yumiki Hori, H-O-R-I-I, -I, also from Tokyo. The father is a doctor. So here she comes now up to Keiko Ayabi. Skinny Mini again doing the brunt of the defending. Clear the pack. Donna Fox up to Keiko Ayabi. Ayabi holding out, doing a great, grand job of defense. Of course, we know Skinny Mini's great potential. She is great. She knocks and gets rid of her Tokyo Bomber opponent. And now let's watch this team work with the T-Birds. A whip up to, this will be a reverse outside. It worked, and the T-Bird moved in. So now they're starting to click on this track, which is a little strange to them. And another, another T-Bird point. Boy, they're happy about that. There's the attractive Keiko Ayabi on our left. Keiko, incidentally, uh, there we have nine for Tokyo, 14 for the T-Birds. There's Donna Fox, long, attractive hair, blonde. Boy, she loves it over here, she said. This is something. And the T-Bird team certainly enjoys the interviews by the local media here, the TV, which, of course, is a big, big network. This is a, one of the top, most popular events on Japanese television, as proved by the tremendous crowds. Number three breaks loose first, Keiko Mori, followed by number one, Kimi, Kimi Ayabi. Here comes Donna Fox. And we got number four, the Japanese skater for the girls is Moto Onuki. Boom, down goes a Tokyo bomber, down goes another one, and now two T-Bird jammers are moving in. We got a chance here to pick up some more points if they can only get by the very competent defensive girl, the captain of the Tokyo team, Keiko Ayabi. Boy, she's good. She can move left and right very quickly. Keeps that good traction, feet firmly planted on the track. The sign of a tremendous experienced skater. And they don't do it, they don't do it. Keiko Ayabi did it. There she is. Boy, they're fine. Well, we got a timeout call here, so we're coming right back with more action after these important words. And the T-Birds now battling the Tokyo Bomber team after the timeout. The Tokyo team, we watched them. They were very engrossed in uh, listening to Vicky Sonoda pointing to each girl on the Tokyo team. And obviously, he was going to shape them up a little bit. They're behind. And they don't like that. They're in their own base now. They've got to show their fans that they're very competent and equal to any roller game team in the league. Two number fours here for the Tokyo Bomber, Yumiki Hori. For the T-Birds, Moto Unuki, who is a Japanese skater, skating on the Thunderbird team. She went down, and there's the Tokyo Bomber going down. Keiko Ayabi right back, gives her an assist, a good whip. Gets that forward momentum moving. She's down again. And right here is the story of Never Say Die. And it's a real, real thrill to watch this Tokyo Bomber team. When they stay down, brother, they've been hit hard. So Keiko Ayabi goes over and talks to Yumiki Hori. And the trainer, Simko, checks him over. There's Donna Fox along with uh, skinny mini Gwen Miller. 10 for the Tokyo team and 14 for the T-Birds. It's a very good close game. Hasn't been much scoring here. A lot of single points, which is a Real tribute to the fine defensive work of both fields on the defense. There, let's watch the play start to move here. And rolling on out again right there is <laughs> that tiny little gals. 
Well, I'll tell you, talk about coming from the same mold. I don't think there's three pounds difference in any of them. But all four jammers are out. Now there's three jammers. Kiko Mori went down. Bam! Down goes another one. That was Masai Nayata. That leaves two T-Birds moving in. Way back of the pack. We're watching the action here. But now here's the front of the pack. Gretchen at the rear of the pack for the front defensive skaters. Two T-Birds. Donna Fox along with Moto Unuki. And look at that teamwork as they get rid of Keiko Ayabi. And two more T-Bird points picked up. Boy, did she hit that upright. We hope Keiko is okay. Because boy, that uprights, they, do. they don't give one single little bit. Keiko Ayabi, there she is. Keiko is a paid professional Buddhist, well, we might say altar girl. Wherever the Buddhist ceremonies are performed, well, they use people like Keiko Ayabi, 16 now for the T-Bird team. There she is. Having a few words with old Skinny Minnie. Hey, hey, hey. She's starting to get a little ruffled here. Of course, Gwen Miller, we know her. Just start her off. She's looking for some of the accolades here of the <laughs> Japanese fans, and she's not going to get any. However, it, it's so noticeable here in the Japanese area that the fans the T-Birds do something good, they cheer them loud and clear. Racing on out, again, number four. She's been doing an awful lot of offensive skater for the Tokyo Bombers, Yumiki Hori. Down the straightaway, a lot of power. This long track here, it's about, well, let's see, nine feet longer than general. And of course, that changes the stride of the skater. And it also changes the action of the skates, so they have to counteract the extra steep bank by a lot of extra unseen maneuvers on the, as far as the stride is concerned, and the way their own skates are tightened or loosened, depending on their weight. Skinny Mini working on a T-Bird, down goes, that was Alice Mason going down for the T-Birds. And let's watch it here, there's Skinny Mini getting a good, hard, solid block in on the Tokyo Bomber Jammer. Keiko says, get up there and try on your own. I'll defend here, and they just can't seem to make it. The jam time ended, and there was no score in that play. And so the Tokyo Bomber girls are finding that the going is tough. However, they are competing against the world champions, and they're holding their own, and they're doing a fine job. Well, the T-Bird team, you know, they're so used to every time they skate against an opposition, they're always being threatened with being clawed and pounded and pummeled. 16-10 still favor the Thunderbird team. They're holding their own here, as we said before. There's not much scoring in big bunches. Rolling out, attractive Donna Fox, followed by Kimi Ayabi of the Ayabi sisters. These fine gals here rock them and sock them action here. Good hard blocking, and Donna was the loser on that one, so the only jammer the Tokyo Bomber moves up to, oh, our old friend Skinny Mini Gwen Miller. Keiko Ayabi drops back and tries that accelerated whip. Thought maybe it might work. Added force, forward momentum might crash through past Skinny Mini. Didn't work. They try it again. No. Never give up here seems to be the cry. And Skinny Mini threw a block that had it landed. Would have really destroyed the uh, Tokyo Bomber jammer. But she's threading her way through and picked up. I believe two more Tokyo Bomber points, and her fans, uh, they're very happy. Very happy. There you have some fine, attractive young ladies here. Yeah, they're kind of funny. They're having a good time. 13, she got three points. 16, timeout call here. We're coming right back with more action after these important words. Well, we can't seem to find one empty seat in this north end uh, as our camera's watching here at the Tokyo Sports Arena. And we're seeing a real fine, well-executed, well-planned game here between the Tokyo Bombers and the white jerseys, the all-Japanese team, against the world-famous world champion, Los Angeles Thunderbirds. And I'm Elmer Anderson here, privileged to bring you all the bank track skating action. 
Rolling on out here. Here he comes, long, tall, Gregory Quinn. Right after him, the speedster. Oh, -ho! he may be fast, but he was dumped quite easily. Number seven, Hiroshi Kuzumi. So the only jammer now is the T-Bird, and he's moving in. Good cruising speed up the high bank, right down the middle of the straightaway, in again, up again. And now meeting him at the rear of the pack, the coach, Mickey Sonoda. Sonoda now trying to get his pack to move a little bit, but the T-Birds have controlled and contained the entire Tokyo team. Riley says, come on, we're going to try something. Over the top of him, yeah. He not, didn't hurdle it. He stepped from Riley over the top of the entire remaining eight skaters. Boy, I'm telling you, from Riley, Gregory Quinn did it. And that, of course, is a big grand slam five-pointer. Increases the lead now to 21 for the T-Birds, 13 for Tokyo. Well, the Tokyo team now, the buzzing will start pretty soon. We're in the final skating period of a real exciting, well-skated game. This is the one sport where there's no difference between any of the girls or the men's rules, no differentiation whatsoever. Good rock'em, sock'em, hard blocking action. To try getting a good hard block going about 40, 45 miles an hour, you better have control of all your faculties or you won't have any to control. Here we go now, two against one, and it's number two, Sugio Kawashima. He's out after two T-Birds. They tried to get rid of him, but he came right back. The Tokyo Bomber team now must, must try to score and do it quickly. He tried, he did it! No, no, he got away. Yes, he did. Now we're gonna watch a burst of speed here. The Tokyo team is gambling. He's got the lead, he's not calling it off. They're gonna gamble, they're gonna gamble. And there he is, he did it. He got by the double block and he picked up at least two points. Boy, they're gambling now, throwing caution to the wind. And Tokyo needs those points because at this stage of the game, that scoreboard and the second seem to race off. There's big John Hall walking around the south end of this huge, big Tokyo Sports Arena, 21-14. Well, I'll tell you one thing. They may be small in stature, but they're quick like field mice. They can really move. John Hall talking to Mickey Sonoda. Now he's up to big Danny Riley. Keona, the official here, trying to separate the two. There's that a little bit of friction here, or we should say a lot of friction between Sonoda right here and Danny Riley of the T-Bird team. Roshi Kazumi telling his coach, hey, let's calm down, let's get some points. The Tokyo fans here, they expect a little bit more from this Tokyo team here. There's much time remaining, but number eight moves out. It's a hero, Sawano. Rolling on out. Sam Washington, that very distinctive skating style. So Sam moves out, and uh, Mr. Perpetual Motion. No gliding here, no sailing in, just stroking, moving in. Here the pack, Sam is off uh, balance. Down he goes. Oh, <laughs> Sam's a little upset about that play. Now number eight moves up to the big, huge, wide-shouldered Danny Riley. Riley. With a hard block, keeps the opponent to the outside. That's the proper way to block. Riley gets another one. Ooh, boy, that rattled ahead of Sawano. And now Riley picks him up. Ooh, boy, flat on his back, like a flat iron. Down he goes. That's Riley pick. Uh, 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 uh. He may have something going on here. Mickey Sonoda and Riley. Riley, of course, has the advantage here. He outweighs the kid by about 50 pounds. And for that, Riley will sit and cool off in the penalty box for the next minute. That'll weaken the defense of the T-Bird team. Trainer looking over the Tokyo Bomber. And with the news that Riley got a one-minute penalty, the crowd likes it. And no, oh, no, Riley has been ruled out for the rest of the game. Hey, hey. Right, look at Hall. Uh, now the problems begin. Bad news here for the T-Birds. Riley, obviously Hall is saying, I don't understand it, what did you do? Well, Riley sunk a big knee right, <laughs> right into Mickey Sonoda's midsection. Now there they have the masterminds here. They gotta figure out how 
with Riley out of the lineup, can they compensate for defensive power? Well, around the outside, Tokyo starts to move. Number two, and they've got nothing but speedsters on this team. So number two moves out, Kawashima from Yokohama. He goes with a block and he misses and he is in the rail, down. So he joins the pack. At the rear of the pack now, here comes Gary McEwen. Rear of the pack, the defense starts to work and they skid around, they couldn't hold that pressure. That turn going up that high bank having problems. Now Hiroshi Kazumi sets him down. McEwen keeps coming in, another hard block. And look at that effort, look at that attitude here of trying to score. And look at that fine defensive work. We gotta say one thing, the Japanese Tokyo Bombers have certainly executed fine, good, clean blocking. <laughs> He's just about to send that insurance block in there, but the Tokyo fans love that display of good skating. And the T-Birds are being given a real treat here. They got competition here that they did not anticipate, even though the T-Bird team is leading at this time. John Hall in the infield. Things are getting serious now. 14 for Tokyo, 22. Eight-point spread. Let's watch the strategy, and Riley is back! Back on the track, I think when his uh, penalty time, no, I don't know here. But boy, did he salt Mickey Sonoda down. Woohoo! And uh, they're jumping all over Danny Riley, and it's uh, to no avail, they'll pound on him. And look out if Riley wheels back one of those huge hams of his, you'll know it. So very quickly, and of course we were right. I believe uh, a minute has certainly gone by, so Riley must be out of that game. We didn't see the signal, we just saw one for unnecessary roughness. But obviously Riley with that sharp tongue of his, he told Kiona off. So now here's two jamming Tokyo Bombers out. Oh, number one, Ricky Endo, one of the speedsters of the Tokyo Bombers. Endo, number one. Number two, Sugio Kawashima. And coming out to try and get out of this mess here, number one, Greg Quinn. Quinn, the T-Bird got the lead. He didn't call a play after gambling. The T-Bird's got the lead. He's got nothing to lose by stalling. And now Greg Quinn is stopping the onslaught, the scoring potential, and two T-Bird jammers are moving in. Greg Quinn plus Sam the Man Washington. Riley likes this play here, and they've got the Tokyo Bomber team on the run. They've got them going now, and the T-Birds are rolling in, and I do believe they picked up at least four more T-Bird points. And that'll increase the lead considerably, seeing as they're nearing the end of the game. Gregory Quinn right here, and of course, Sam the Man. Now Tokyo will be very concerned, 14 to 28. Ooh -hoo. Well, now we're gonna watch the action. We can see Mickey Sonola here screaming action, uh, just screaming some words here. He wants action, he wants it right now. Big Kaskawano in front of that uh, pack will try to keep the T-Birds in. He's working that defense, see how Kaz is moving up front. There's a whip, there he goes, he's on his way. Number seven, Hiroshi Kazumi. The only jammer, they could use another jammer, but right now, obviously, they feel if they get him in, there'll be time for more jams. And at the rear of the pack, Carlos Marquez had difficulty there. There comes the Tokyo Bomber. He got in there and he called that playoff very quick. Very quick. So what their strategy obviously here is well painted right in front of us. Get a couple of points, call it off, get some more points. But at least get in there, 17 to 28. Don't know how much time here now that the Japanese skaters are gonna have to do here, but they're gonna try now to get another one out very quickly. No wasted motion, no wasted time. Rolling out, ooh, 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 the crowd here. They're starting now to really squeal and holler. Kazumi again, Sam Washington through a block. He almost went right off the rail. There you have him, screaming. Sam is right back in action. And now, Greg Quinn at the rear of the pack will try to stop number seven, Kazumi. Mickey Sonoda dropping back. Kazumi now the only jammer. Gregory Quinn on defense for the T-Bird team, slowing him down, hitting him hard. Greg Quinn, all over six feet tall. Number seven, he's about five, six. And he went down and there's no score in that play. And so it looks like a tough day for the Tokyo Bomber team. Trainer moves up, checks on the ball and bomber. 
Sedona comes over. John Hall coming out. Andy Riley's still out of the game. And what do we got here? We got 17 for Tokyo, 28 for the T-Birds. They win the game. And we're coming right back with more wrap-up right after these words. Well, Ralphie, that was truly a great game. One big important question our fans around the network would like to know, how does it feel to skate in Tokyo? Homer, it's a great feeling to be able to skate in a big city like Tokyo at the Budokan. And uh, I tell you, uh, it's a great feeling only because when you're skating in somebody else's backyard, and you kind of feel that, well, they're, gonna, they're not going to like you because they're going to go for their own team naturally. But I tell you, when we go to Japan, we get a lot of presents from the fans there. They, they want to shake their hands, they want their autographs and everything, and it, it's a great feeling. And uh, I want to be able to go back to Tokyo and other cities in Japan. Well, uh, another technical question many of your fans would like to know. Does the Japanese track differ from our particular track? Elmer, basically all the tracks are about the same uh, size. It all depends on the size of the building. But uh, the Japanese uh, skaters are used to skating this particular track. And it doesn't take too long for a professional teams, such as the Thunderbirds, which are champions, get used to a particular track, Elmer. Well, you don't find then, therefore, that the fans are strictly for the Tokyo Bomber team and boo you. Not team. at all. They're beautiful. They're wonderful fans. And I got to give credit to the Tokyo Bombers. They are very uh, fast skaters. They're tricky. And I'm kind of proud of them myself. Well, it looks like, according to all the statistics, the rumors that we get, that they're out to be the come the next world champions. What chance do they have? Well, listen, they have as good a chance as any other team. The Bombers and the Tokyo, the, the Texas, everybody. Well, okay, you've been with us this time. We'll see you next week, same time, same place.